Okay, we're graphing this rational function. We've determined that the numerator has zeros at x equals negative 1 from this factor and at uh, x equals negative 3 fourths from this factor. Now, those zeros are pretty close together. And we've determined that uh, by looking at the signs and thinking just about how the numbers work, that the graph goes through from positive to negative as it passes through the negative three quarters and from negative to positive as it passes through the negative one. So that the graph is going to kind of curve around like so. We've also determined that at x equals negative one half, we have an asymptote that uh, comes down on the positive side to the right of x equals negative one half and comes up uh, from the negative as or, or as we, if we approach x equals negative one half from the left it goes down toward a negative asymptote and that's perfectly compatible with the way the graph turns here. The graph turns here and then it can just turn on down and approach this negative asymptote. At x equals negative 6, we also have an asymptote. And by similar analysis, if x is a little less than negative 6, the, uh, the, the sign of this expression is going to be positive. If it's a little greater than negative 6, the sign is going to be negative. And that allows us, to, well, that means we're going to come through this asymptote We're going to have negative values on this side, positive values on this side, meaning that the graph can go down here and curve around and approach a negative asymptote. Now, that's not particularly, uh, that's not drawn with, with a whole lot of grace. Actually, the slope here should be uh, a little less on the scale of this graph because the thing won't really have this kind of a change in, in uh, concavity here. Uh, so that isn't very good. We'll correct that in a minute. Uh, on this side, of course, we will have a positive asymptote. And the last thing we want to consider is what happens as we go on to the right of all the zeros and asymptotes or to the left. As we go on to the right, x will eventually go into large positive values. Okay, if x is a large positive number, then uh, the negative 8x is going to be a large negative number. The 8x is going to be a large positive number. The negative 6x is a large negative number, and x a large positive number. And the negative 6, the 8, and the negative 3, and the 6, the constant terms in these uh, factors, won't make much difference at all. If x is big enough, then the factors with x in them will overwhelm the factors that don't have x's in them. So we're going to have negative, positive, negative, positive. That's going to give us a positive. Well, the other thing is that the uh, numerator is going to be close to 8x times 8x. Actually, negative 8x times 8x, negative 64x. For large x, we can ignore the negative 6 and the 8. So we're going to have something up here that's very much, uh, very close to negative 64x. In the denominator, we're going to have something close to negative 6x, which means that for large x, y is going to approach negative 64x divided by negative 6x, and that's going to equal 10 and 2 thirds. So what's that going to mean? Now that means that this is going to level off to a horizontal asymptote at y equals 10 and 2 thirds. Uh, the same is going to be true if x is a large negative number. 
x is a large negative number, that's going to make this positive, this negative, this positive, and this negative. But we're still going to have essentially 64x over 6x, negative 64x over negative 6x, still giving us 10 and 2 thirds, so that that horizontal asymptote will extend over here and uh, running out of board space, but this will curve around asymptotic to the line y equals 10 and 2 thirds. Now I'm going to pause here and draw a slightly better graph. Okay, I've again sketched the outline of the graph. Uh, x equals negative one half here, and that's three negative three quarters, negative one. X equals negative six here, and I've sketched a horizontal line that I've labeled y equals ten and two thirds. We're going to draw a graph that fits uh, this picture. Now, uh, the ten and two thirds is not on the same scale. The y axis is not intended to be in the same scale as the x-axis. If it was, uh, then uh, the 10 to 2 thirds would have to be further up than the negative 6 is over, and, uh, and it would just uh, get out of hand here. So we've had to compress the y scale a little bit. Uh, but to draw the graph now, uh, we have to start off at x equals negative 6 with a negative asymptote. We've got to come up to this point where x equals negative 1, go slightly above the x-axis, and then turn around rather quickly and approach the negative asymptote at x equals negative 1 half. And then we have a positive asymptote on the other side of x equals negative 1 half. So that's probably going to look something like this. Now we could determine the y-intercept. And that looks like it might be around 15 or something like that. Let's see. If x equals 0, we get negative 6 times 8 is negative 48. Negative 3 times 6 is negative 18. And uh, that doesn't fit at all. I'll puzzle over that in a minute. But let's, let's continue here. Um, and then, of course, we have the asymptote on the other side of x equals negative 6. Now, let me pause for a second and see what's not working here. Okay, I'm forced to conclude that uh, this curve isn't quite right, that um, the y-intercept occurs when x equals 0, and that's going to be at negative 6 times 8 divided by negative 3 times 6, which is going to equal 8 thirds, which is 2 and 2 thirds, which is going to be uh, about here. We've got to go through this point, and the only conclusion I can draw and uh, unfortunately, time doesn't permit me to take the derivatives and calculate the, uh, the, the behavior by cheating and using calculus. Um, this graph has got to somehow come down here and turn around and come back up to this asymptote. Uh, it can't go negative. We can check and see that if x is greater than negative 1 half, then um, we have an equal number of positives and negatives up here. So that y has to stay positive. Um, and, and of course, y can't be negative uh, if it comes down from a positive asymptote here uh, without going through 0. And the only way it can go through 0 is if one of these factors is 0. And that happens at negative 1 and negative 3 quarters, as we've seen here and here. So. I've got to take a little water in this and uh, conclude that the graph has to have this shape.